For about two minutes out, so if you would please turn off all cell phones, pagers, blackberries, Nextels, any audio producing devices, camera monitors, bureau phones.
Good afternoon. It is my honor to announce today that I will recommend to the President uh, that he nominate Admiral Michael G. Mullen, the Chief of Naval Operations, as the next Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, succeeding General Peter Pace when the latter's term of office concludes on September 30, 2007. Admiral Mullen became Chief of Naval Operations on July 22, 2005. A 1968 graduate of the Naval Academy, he has served in Allied, Joint, and Navy positions overseas and in both the Atlantic and Pacific fleets. I have become well acquainted with Admiral Mullen over the past six months and believe he has the vision, strategic insight, experience, and integrity to lead America's armed forces. I'm also pleased to announce that I will recommend to the President that he name that he nominate General James E. Cartwright, currently the Commander of Strategic Command, as the next Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, succeeding Admiral Edmund G. Giambastiani, Jr., who has announced his intention to retire. General Cartwright has been the Commander of STRATCOM since 2004, responsible for global command and control of U.S. strategic forces, computer network operations, Department of Defense information operations, as well as global command, control, communications, com computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. He served as director of the Joint Staff for Force Structure, Resources, and Assessment from 2002 to 2004. I believe he is exceptionally well qualified to take on the responsibilities of the Vice Chairman. It had been my intention from early in my tenure to recommend to the President that General Pace be renominated for another two-year term as chairman. However, after consultations over the course of several weeks with both Republican and Democratic senators, I concluded that because General Pace has served as chairman and vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the last six years, the focus of his confirmation process would have been on the past rather than the future, 
and further that there was the very real prospect the process would be quite contentious. I am no stranger to contentious confirmations, and I do not shrink from them. However, I have decided that at this moment in our history, the nation, our men and women in uniform, and General Pace himself would not be well served by a divisive ordeal in selecting the next chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Pete Pace has been a United States Marine for more than 40 years. He has served our country with great distinction and deserves the deepest thanks of the American people for a lifetime of service to our country and for his leadership. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with him, trust him completely, and value his candor and his willingness to speak his mind. I look forward to continuing to work with him until the fall and to a continuing friendship after his retirement. I also will miss Ed Giambastiani. I had intended to recommend that Ed be renominated for another term as vice chief, but the selection of Admiral Mullen foreclosed the, as chairman foreclosed that option. I then asked Ed to take on another senior assignment, and he decided to proceed with his plans to retire. On a personal note, Ed and I first worked together over 20 years ago when I was Deputy Director of Central Intelligence. Ed has given 37 years of distinguished military service to America and merits our gratitude and highest respect. Both General Pace and Admiral Giambastiani will be recognized in ways that befit their extraordinary and distinguished service. I'd be happy to take a couple of questions. Lita. Um, Mr. Secretary, did members of Congress tell you specifically that they did not want to see General Pace uh, renominated? I would characterize the counsel that I received more along the lines that I've described, that it would be a backward-looking uh, and very contentious process. Mr. Secretary, could, could this be described in Washington terms, I guess, as a shake-up? No. I think this is a, an effort to, tru to do what, what I think is in the best long-term interests of the, uh, of the services and of the country, as well as the individuals involved. Um, I think that, uh, as I say, my, in my intent had been to renominate both of uh, both. Uh, General Pace and Admiral Giambastiani, but I think that um, the events of the last several months uh, have, have simply uh, created an environment in which I think uh, uh, there would be a, a confirmation process that would not um, be in the best interest of the country. So it's not a reflection of how General Pace conducted the war in Iraq? It's it? absolute, it has absolutely nothing to do with my view of General Pace's performance or that of General Giambastiani uh, whatsoever. Yeah. Sir, any concern that with only a year and a half left in your tenure in the midst of uh, the new security plan that a change in the top at this moment will complicate and make your job harder? No, I don't think so. First of all, the, the people that I'm recommending to the president are, are very experienced. Um, we uh, have uh, three other chiefs of staff who um, uh, are experienced people. Um, we have, a, I think, a deep bench uh, at the Department of Defense. Um, the vice chairman, uh, in particular, over the over recent years, has particularly taken on a role in working with the deputy on resources, uh, in dealing with the Hill and the interagency process. I think uh, uh, General Cartwright has a lot of experience in each of these areas, um, and uh, I know the deputy is looking forward to working with him, assuming uh, Senate, assuming the president nominates him and uh, the Senate confirms him. Uh, so I, I think that um, um, I don't think that there'll be a problem. Yeah. Mr. Secretary, who will replace Admiral Mullen as CNO? Uh, that no decision has been made on that at this point. Mr. Secretary, you seem rather down about this situation where you couldn't get your first two choices for uh, these nominations. What does it say about the situation in Washington where the the politics on the Hill affects even senior and very crucial military appointments? Well, I, um, I am disappointed 
uh, that, uh, that circumstances uh, make this kind of a decision necessary. Um, I, as I say, I just think that a, a divisive ordeal at this point uh, is not in the interest of the country uh, or of uh, our military services, our men and women in uniform, or the individuals. Uh, I wish that uh, that were not the case. I wish it were not necessary to make a decision like this. Um, but I think it's um, a realistic appraisal of where we are. Mr. Secretary, on, on your talks on the uh, uh, Hill with congressional members, did any of them uh, give suggestions to you for Admiral Mullen or, uh, uh, or the, other, the other choices? No. Or was this all on your own? No. This, this, I, this was uh, my, my selections here have been made, quite frankly, in consultation with General Pace uh, and with the Deputy Secretary. Yeah. Mr. Secretary, what is it that Admiral Mullen brings uh, to this position at this particular time? Well, he's probably, I think, at this point, is the most senior of the service chiefs. Uh, but more importantly, I think um, he is a very smart, strategic thinker. Um, uh, and I think he has a view of the interests of, of the services as a whole. Uh, when, when my senior military assistant was making his um, uh, introductory calls on the various service chiefs and he asked uh, Admiral Mullen uh, what was the thing on his, that he was most concerned about, um, the Chief of Naval Operations said, the Army. So he has a broad view of what the needs and requirements of the services are, what the nation uh, and of the nation, and I think he brings also a a, a tremendous uh, strategic sense. So as we try to look to the future in terms of where we need to be uh, five years from now or ten years from now, I think Admiral Mullen will bring a tremendous perspective. Mr. Secretary, what was, what was exactly that uh, the congressman told you? that they had concerns about with uh, Chairman Pace? What they, to a person, told me was the highest respect they had for General Pace as a military officer, uh, for his integrity, uh, and so on. Uh, their comments were more about what they thought the hearings would be like and what the focus of the hearings would be rather than on anything about General Pace uh, individually or as a person. So it was really more uh, uh, an appraisal uh, of the fact that because of his experience over the last six years, uh, the focus of the hearings would be backward-looking instead of forward-looking and contentious, uh, just because of all the issues that we're familiar with. So I think it's important, I'm glad you asked the question, because uh, one of the things that everybody I talked to expressed uh, was their very highest regard uh, for General Pace uh, as a military officer. Does that indicate to you, Mr. Secretary, that support for the Iraq War in Congress, even among Republicans, is uh, is seriously waning? No, I don't think it says that. Well, why wouldn't they then want to go through the rigors of uh, of that debate? It was my decision uh, that we would that this kind of a divisive ordeal was was not in the best interest. Uh, it was it ended up being my decision. Thanks very much. Okay.